This is section 9-1 through 9-3, and we're going to embark on a crash course in linear algebra. So the things we're going to need to be able to do are arithmetic and calculus with matrices and vectors, go between matrices and linear systems, solve a simple linear system, and compute determinants. Let's start with the identity matrix. The identity matrix is either going to be a 2x2 two two or a 3x3 three three for all of our problems. And it's got zeros everywhere except on the main diagonal, the identity matrix has ones. You can use brackets or parentheses for a matrix, but that's it. You can't use squiggly brackets. You can't use nothing. Just leave the the symbols off, uh, and you can't use bars because those are reserved for absolute value. Uh, sorry, for determinants and absolute value. Okay, um, some of this stuff you're already going to know from, from Calc 3, but we're going to go over it anyway. So addition and scalar multiplication is done component-wise, all right, and here's what that means. In this example, we're going to distribute the two to each component of this vector. So this gives us 2, negative 4, and then we're going to add it to the vector e to the t, 2. So we add across the top, those are the x components, and then add the y components. So 2 plus e to the t, and then negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And that's the resulting vector. For the next one, we're taking a matrix and subtracting R times the identity matrix. Now, by context, we know that this is the 2x2 two two identity and not the 3x3 three three identity because you can only subtract a 2x2 two two matrix from another 2x2 two two matrix. So let me go slow and then I'll show you um, how to do it in your head. 1, 2, 3, 4 minus R times the 2x2 two two identity. Okay, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, minus, when we take a scalar times a matrix, we multiply every entry of that matrix by the scalar. So that gives us R's on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now we go ahead and subtract um, each entry from the corresponding entry. So I take 1 and I subtract R. And then I take 2 and I subtract 0. 3, subtract 0. And 4, subtract r. Okay, so in reality, you can do that in your head. Whenever you subtract r times the identity from a matrix, the result is just subtracting r from the entries on the main diagonal. So I went through slowly here so you could see all the steps. But in reality, when, once you do a few of these, you're going to go straight to, oh, that's 1 minus r, 2, 3, 4 minus r. Okay. If you haven't figured it out by now, I have this clock in my kitchen, and every hour a different bird sings. So this is the 7 o'clock bird. All right. We're going to have to multiply matrices times vectors in this chapter. Now you can multiply a matrix times another matrix, and those of you in 3A know how to do that, but we don't have to do that here. We just have to multiply a matrix times a vector. And the way we'll do that is dot the rows of the matrix with the vector, and that will give us the entries of our result, which will be a vector. So here I have a matrix it's got two rows and three columns, and I want to multiply by this vector, which has three rows and one column. So I'm going to take, I've got, I've got it color-coded here, I'm going to dot 2, 3, negative 2, that vector, with 2, negative 3, 1. Okay, and that gives me 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So I add those numbers, 4 minus 9 minus 2 is negative 7. And then for the second entry of my result, I dot this vector 
with this vector. And I get negative 2, and then 0 times negative 3 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. And I add those numbers to get negative 1. Okay, so why don't you guys pause the video and try the next one. Well, try the next two yourself. Okay, so we're going to have a vector with two entries. I'm going to dot 1, 2 with negative 1, 2 to get negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. And then I'm going to dot 3, 4 with negative 1, 2. And that gives me negative 3 plus 8 is 5. Okay, next one. This is a three, a matrix with three rows, and so my answer vector will have three rows, three entries. So I'm going to take this vector, 1, 2, 0, dot it with x, y, z. That gives me 1 times x plus 2 times y. Then I take the second row and I dot it with x, y, z, and that just gives me y. Finally, the third row, dotted with x, y, z, is 3x plus z. And that's my vector. All right, calculus of vectors and matrices is done component-wise, meaning just take the derivative of each entry. So it's super simple. Here, x prime, take the derivative of the top, and then the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the top needs the product rule. Uh, 2t is my f, e to the 3t is my g. So the derivative of 2t is 2. Multiply by e to the 3t. And then add on 2t times the derivative of e to the 3t. e to the 3t, the derivative is 3e to the 3t. So I'm going to get 6t e to the 3t. And then for the second entry, the derivative of cosine is negative because it starts with a c. Cosine starts with a c. And by the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So negative 3 sine 3t. OK. So why don't you pause the video and try these three yourself. Really do it. All right, we're back. This one has to be done in steps. First, you have to do this product and then add on this vector. So if we do the product first, remember, we're going to dot this row with this column. That'll give us 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. And then we're going to go negative 2 plus 16, which is 14. And then we're going to add on the vector 5, negative 3. All right, and then we just add across the top and add across the bottom. So that's negative 3 and 11. And again, you can use square brackets for a vector or parentheses, it doesn't matter. I tend to use parentheses when I'm writing because it's easier to do, and then I use brackets when I'm typing because it takes up less um, real estate. Okay, for the next one, again, we're going to do this product first. So I dot 1, 2 with x, y to get x plus 2y, and then dot 3, 4 with x, y to get 3x plus 4y. And then I'm going to add on, I'm going to distribute that to 2x, 2y. Hopefully in your work, when you do this on your own, you have either brackets or parentheses around your vectors. I'm going to want to see that when you show your work on the next test. So 2x plus x is 3x, add 2y. And then on the bottom, we get 3x plus 6y. 
All right. And finally, um, find the derivative dx dt, where x is the sum of these two vectors. Now you can just take the derivative of e to the 2t, bring down the 2, and then multiply that by this vector. What I'm going to do is rewrite x before I take the derivative. So I'm not going to take x prime yet. I'm going to write x like this. Distribute the e to the 2t. So e to the 2t, negative e to the 2t. And then I'm going to distribute the 3 and the t. So 3t, negative 3t. Okay, now I'm going to take the derivative, x prime. So 2e to the 2t, negative 2e to the 2t, plus, take the derivative of each entry, 3, negative 3. Now I'll add. So um, 2e to the 2t plus 3, negative 2e to the 2t minus 3. Okay, now I mentioned there was an alternative way to do this. If you take the derivative right off, <clears throat> 1, negative 1 is a constant, so, so we're going to leave that alone. 1, negative 1, take the derivative of e to the 2t, which is 2e to the 2t, and then add on 3, 1, negative 1, times the derivative of t, which is 1, and then add those two vectors. But first you have to distribute, distribute the 3, and then add, and you get the same thing. I think it's easier to distribute first, and then take the derivative, like I did it here. You're, you're less likely to make a mistake. Let's put it that way. Okay, last topic for this portion of the video is linear systems of equations. Now, if you're in, your math, if you're in math 3a, um, is that what it is? Linear algebra. You can solve linear systems like you currently do in linear algebra, and I'm fine with that. But I'm going to introduce things a little bit differently um, for everyone who hasn't taken linear algebra. I'm going to make it a little more simple. All right, every linear system can be written as a matrix equation. So this linear system can be written like this. And if you can't see that immediately, let me multiply out this product for you, this matrix times this vector. So this is going to give us a vector, and the first entry is going to be 6x minus y plus 5z. The second entry will be 2y plus 2z. I'm dotting here. And the third entry is going to be negative x plus 3y plus z. And that vector is equal to this vector. And so the way you get your linear system is you set the um, top entries equal, the middle entries equal, and the bottom entries equal. And you get three equations. And so we're going to have to go between matrix notation and linear system notation constantly. So let me show you some examples. Let A be this matrix and X, Y be this vector. Write the matrix equation X prime equals AX as linear system. All right, pause the video and give it a shot. I like to do these um, in two steps. Step one is to write down the matrix equation. So write down this as a matrix equation. X prime is, if, if big X is little x, little y, then X prime is little x prime, little y prime. And that's equal to AX. So I just copy down A, minus 2, 1, 3, 4 times x, which is little x, little y. Okay, then I write that as a linear system. So we're going to, and you can do this, you can do this at this point in your head. So you're going to set 
the top entry is equal and the bottom entry is equal. But before you can set the top entry is equal, you need to do this product. So let me, I'll do that on the line below. This is the part you can do in your head. This product is negative 2x plus y, 3x plus 4y. And that's equal to x prime, y prime. And so step two would be um, your linear system. Just set the top entries equal, x prime equal negative 2x plus y, and y prime equal 3x plus 4y. All right, so this part you can do mentally, but I think it's good practice to, um, to actually write out step one, that's this step, where you write down the matrix equation, then go down to your linear system. And so this is our final answer here. Okay, so this, la this is the last example for this video, so hang in there. Write out x prime equals ax as a linear system. So just like I did above, I'm gonna start with the matrix equation x1 prime, x2 prime equals 1, 1, negative 2, 4 times x, which is x1, x2. So that's the matrix equation because it has a matrix in it. All right, and then that gives me a system of linear equations. The first equation is x1 prime equals x1 plus x2. And I'm getting that by dotting top row with x1, x2. And then the second equation is x2 prime is negative 2x1 plus 4x2. And I'm getting that by dotting second row with x1, x2. So there's my linear system. B, show that this vector x is a solution of x prime equals ax. Okay, so we don't want to assume what we're trying to show. So this is the type of problem where you do left-hand side and right-hand side. So left-hand side of this equation is x prime, all right? And x prime equals, just take the derivative of x, 3e to the 3t, 6e to the 3t. Right-hand side is ax. So let's write down what a is. It's 1, 1, negative 2, 4. And x is e to the 3t, 2 e to the 3t. And to compute that product using the dot product. So the first entry is going to be e to the 3t plus 2 e to the 3t. So that's 3e to the 3t. Second entry is going to be negative 2e to the 3t plus 8e to the 3t. 8 take away 2 is 6. And then we look. Okay, yes, left-hand side equals right-hand side. So this is a solution. And in section uh, 9.5, we're actually going to see how to find x. So it's going to take us a while to be able to find solutions, but right now we can verify solutions. We can also solve initial value problems if we're given the solution. So given a solution looks like this, find x. So our job is to find c1 and c2. If the initial condition is big X of zero is the vector zero, one. So what I do is I plug in to this equation. On the left, I put in zero, one. And on the right, I put zero in for T. I put zero in for T. So that gives me C one, one, two. E to the zero is one. And then C two, 1, 1, and again, e to the 0 is 1. So I'll write down one more vector equation, and then I'll separate it out as a linear system. <clears throat> this is the vector equation 0, 1, 
equals, let's distribute that C1. C1 to C1 plus C2, C2. Leave off the e to the zero. Now write that as two equations. Zero equals C1 plus C2. And one, reading across the bottom now, is 2C1 plus C2. Okay, so you can solve this any way you want. You could solve the top one for C1 and plug it into the second one. Um, my favorite method is elimination. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top equation by negative 1 and add it to the bottom equation. So 0 equals negative C1 minus C2. Add it to 1 equals 2C1 plus C2. That'll clear out the C2s, and I'll get 1 equals C1. Okay, that was easy. So C1 is 1, and so then C2, using you know this equation, if C1 is 1, C2 must be negative 1. And so finally, plug that back into our x. So we get big X is 1 times 1, 2, e to the 3t plus negative 1, so put a minus there, 1, 1, e to the 2t. And there's our IVP solution. Notice it has no C1 and C2 in it because we found them. All right. That's the end of this section of the lecture notes. I'll pick up with the second video.